here. Okay, you can go cut this part of it out. All right, Rebel fans, we are here in the locker room talking with our players of the game, play of the game, and uh, we'll talk with Coach Allen. We're starting out with our play of the game. Uh, of course, those of you who watch the game know that Wilcox kind of jumped out early, seven to nothing on the fourth, and uh, nine uh, touchdown pass. Chambers came back down the field, uh, was moving the ball, and uh, not able to score, and then uh, got the ball back, I believe, if I remember right, I think that's how it went. And um, it was 4.1 seconds left in the first quarter, and number two phase back by his number six. So number two, you tell me about that play, and then I'll get number six's perspective. Our play of the game is JoJo Hendricks to Jeremy Spud Conway. Uh, touchdown on the last play of the first quarter. Well, I knew Spud was going to beat that corner. I should have thrown him a little bit earlier, but he turned around and had a good, great catch on it. Defense got to stop, you know. They punted the ball. Joe, I think it was the first play, wasn't it? First play was enough. First play, you know, I thought I could beat the guy I did. We had good time. Joe had good time. Had a good time in the pocket, so he just threw it over me. Had a great punt on So he did it. All right, you two seniors. We're going to go out winning, all right? Okay, I've got a big game next week. Uh, we'll let you all go back and celebrate with your teammates. And we'll talk to our defensive player of the game. If y'all run into John White out there, remind him that I asked him to come in. Yes, sir. Thank you. See you. Thank you. Thank you. Somewhere between 12 and 14 tackles. I didn't know officially until the stats were total up. But uh, uh, every time I looked up, number 12 was tackling number 12. <laughs> <laughs> it seemed like you were, uh, you and he met right off and out there. Yes, sir. And uh, honestly, I felt like the first drive wasn't so good. You know, we kind of we kind of were shocked how they were running the ball. And then after that, uh, we just kept. Uh, kept our head focused on, and um, we knew number 12 or number one was going to run the ball, so we just focused on them, and the offensive line, I, I feel like the offensive line couldn't block me either side, so every time they ran the uh, buck or ca uh, counter, I felt like I could make the tackle easily, and then on the pa pass rush, I mean, it was a, I mean, they were dropping back so fast, I, I mean, by the time I made contact with the uh, tackle, you know, I was already in the backfield, so. All you gotta do is get off him and then make a sack. So. You make it sound so easy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, about the only sacks I ever make was when I uh, stopped at Jackson. So. <laughs> but you're, uh, you've, you've had a great year defensively. Uh, we hope we've got two more games to go. Uh, uh, and it uh, all starts next week. We get to see our old buddy scam you. Yes, sir. We're gonna work extra hard to, uh, next week. Uh, preparing for them, you know. We gotta stop Bubba, we gotta stop the quarterback, we gotta stop number one. And, you know, we got defense line has to work extra hard this week, you know, because we know uh, Bubba, you know, we know, we all know he can run the ball. So, we're, me, Bebo, Hunter, Zach, we're gonna work 10 times harder than we like, ever have, try to stop him and stop the whole offense. All right, so you're number 12. Congratulations on being our defensive player of the game. We've got Coach Allen in here with us, and uh, we're going to try to find John White, who is our offensive player of the game. Get him in here for the interview. But, uh, here comes Coach Allen. Come on, check the scores for other games. Try to see who's going to be playing who. Hello, Cal. Hello, Coach. Uh, start out by commending you on something that uh, 
I stumbled on your main five years this week. You won your 100th ball game. Five years later, you just won 159. That's not too bad. 59 games in five years. That's about 12 a year. Uh, a good football field named after you every time. Congrat <laughs> congratulations to you on your number of career win number 159. Uh, looked like it might not be easy there for a while. But it was a little bit of a struggle to start with. Uh, tell us about your view of the game and half the grid. Yeah, Wilcox had a really good game plan, I thought, coming in. Their plan was to shorten the game, um, and they got in an empty set a lot, five wide, and, uh, you know, uh, the quarterback ran around on that one play, and, and uh, we, we didn't get him on the ground. And uh, they had some really wide splits with their offensive linemen. They were trying to uh, to uh, open their run game up in there and, and isolate their quarterback, and then they would bring the guy in motion in the quad. So it was – it was really some unconventional stuff that they were doing, so we had to we had to grasp what they were doing and kind of make some adjustments. And uh, you know, uh, I thought I thought our kids did a good job after that first drive or so. But uh, they shortened the game. They got they they would get a uh, third down. They converted on third down, and uh, you know, it, it ran the play clock down pretty low before they snapped it. So uh, they had a good game plan, and um, you know, I thought I thought our kids did a good job of not panicking. Um, we, we drove the ball well that first drive. We had a penalty that really set us behind the chains, and we can't do those things in the playoffs. Um, but our kids settled in. We ended up we ended up going really fast tempo to try to offset the fact that they were running the clock so that we would get more plays. And then I thought the touchdown pass there at halftime was huge. That really uh, kind of kind of really put the momentum squarely in our favor going into halftime. Yeah, you. Uh Scored on the last play of the first quarter. Scored on the last play of the second quarter. Uh, yeah. Didn't make it the third and fourth place plays, but uh, you can't do it every time, I guess. But there was 4.1 seconds left with the first quarter touchdown and 1.2 seconds left with the second quarter touchdown. And, uh, otherwise, you're looking to have a seven to seven score at that time. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. Our kids made some uh, some great plays. I thought the first touchdown by Spud was an unbelievable catch by him. He adjusted well. And I thought it was a great catch by John right there for halftime. Just a single, got to make those plays, one-on-one -on -one plays. And our guys went up and made them. And, uh, you know, that's what you got to do, especially when it gets, gets uh, late in the year in the playoff season. I want to ask John coming in here to sit on this side of me. And uh, we'll talk to him because I know we need to talk about the next week. All right, this is our offensive player of the game, John White. Uh, John. And momentarily had the offensive play in the game, but then they uh, kept on playing so well, we decided he was player of the game. So, uh, first of all, take us through the uh, 1.2 second left touchdown that you made. Well, at first, there wasn't even there wasn't even going to be uh, the play call that Coach Allen called. It was another pass concept, and then he saw the, how the defense lined up and called that uh, pass concept, and. We just converted on it. I don't really know what I say. What a great catch. She was a sweet sight for us to look down there and see you holding the ball up with both hands. Yes. <laughs> I'm sure Coach Allen was glad to see it too. Uh, then you had, how many touchdowns total? I don't remember. Three. Three. That's what five. So you had, uh, and one of, the, one of them was a rushing touchdown. Yes, sir. And then one more pass, right? Yes, sir. Well, that was really a passing because we could pitch the ball that's forward. Right. So that's considered Coach Allen taught me that last week. <laughs> So instead of rushing yards, you got receiving yards. Yes. But hey, you got the yards either way, most important. You got six points. Yes. So, uh, excited about next week. Yes, sir. We got to get better and study film. Yeah. You got to beat the man, you got to beat the man. Yes, sir. That's what uh, I remember Coach Allen told me years ago. Uh, when he and I were both young. Not quite as young as you. Uh, all right, number 16. Hope you have a, a good evening, a good weekend, a good week of practice, and we look forward to. Uh, Hopefully, getting another play of the game or a player of the game. I think. Yes, sir. Thank you. See you. See you. I, I'd like to say just uh, what, uh, what an awesome career John has had. Uh, just really proud of uh, the player he's become. And uh, he's really made. He was really the first guy that came over for us uh, from Valley and really uh, cut last year and really uh, kind of started the trend with those guys. And they bought into what we were doing and believed in us. and. Uh, 
He's just been a joy to coach the last two years. I've really enjoyed him. Yeah, yeah I agree. He's a, he's a great young man. You got a lot of great young men on this team. Uh, they're going to be missed. But there's more going to come along right behind them. But we got some, uh, some kids all the way down to Pee Wee that are, uh, that are picking up the man. Yeah. Just like he picked it up for those of them for him. Got to tell you, and I hope that you will watch at least the first half broadcast tonight because your son did a spectacular job as a broadcaster and they have a picture of him uh, and broadcasting. He, uh, he knew all about the offense. He was able to tell us what to expect and, and uh, what the plays were and uh, just, just did a super job. So I think you'll be favorably impressed when you watch uh, watch his efforts tonight. He did a great job. Well, he, he, he's, he knows a lot about the game. He's grew up around it and uh, you know, I, I don't doubt that one bit. In fact, I told him, I said, I want you on the sideline with me, helping me see what's going on, because you, you know that besides me, he knows our offense better than anybody. And, uh, you know, he, I think he's going. I think he's got a chance to uh, be around the game in the future. I think he'd make a fantastic coach. I think he's got the demeanor for it, and uh, he's definitely got the intelligence and been around it long enough to understand it. Well, he really, uh, he had a lot to broadcast. In the very least, when, uh, when he, Chester I cash it in, we got, uh, got a prospect to come along and take our place. Well, let's move along. Uh, first round, really weren't any upsets, and not very many close games. Uh, we had uh, Patricia, Stanby on top, and us. Last year it was uh, one West team, three East teams this year. One East team, three West teams. Yeah. That didn't really surprise you, does it? Uh, no, and I guess we were the only team uh, from this side to win. I, but uh, I knew there were th three really good teams on the other side. I've been following them all year, and that's the Talga, Scammy, and Patrician. And uh, I've been, I even talked to Patrician's coach yesterday, and he said it's the best football team he's had since he's been there. And, you know, they beat us in the state championship game a couple years ago. So uh, I knew they had a really good team, um, and uh, there was a chance that could happen. And, uh, you know, I thought that um, – you know, we got uh, we got our work cut out for us, no doubt. Yeah, we uh, got a sure enough football team coming in next Friday night. Right? Absolutely, absolutely. You know, but that's the way it's supposed to be when you when you get this deep. You're in the, you're in the semifinals. You know, trying to get to the championship game, and uh, you know, I think this is a unique year in the fact that I think Escambia, Otaga, <clears throat> are they're they're by far two of the better teams in our league. Um, and I think if you really break it down another step farther, if you take the top five in the AISA, I think the four teams uh, left in 2A are in that top five, along with Pike, from what I've just seen over the year. So I think 2A is, is significantly stronger than AAA. And uh, whoever comes out of 2A with the state championship this year, is going to be uh, be the best team in AISA. Well, that's where it was last year. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we proved it on the field last year, and um, I mean, I had the opportunity to prove it on the field this year since we didn't make it past uh, Pike. But hey, yeah. if we win two A state championship, we'll take it. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Uh, what do you know about Escambia? I mean, you obviously we. Uh, great game with them in the championship game last year and uh, how much have they changed and how much have we changed? Yeah, um, you know, we, we both have a lot of our players back. Um, of course, we lost our quarterback and uh, they didn't. It starts for them with, to me, with number two, Sims. Uh, he's the coach's, uh, assistant coach's son and uh, he's just a fantastic football player. I think he's uh, made a case for him, maybe possibly being the most valuable player in our league this year. Uh, and then Bubba Nettles, number 11, is just an unbelievable player. He just really put on a show last year in the championship game. And, uh, and uh, so, you know, it starts with those two guys. If we don't tackle those guys and get them on the ground, then it's, it's pretty – it's going to be really hard to beat those guys. Um, what they've done this year, they've added some more talent up front. They're, they're a very big team up front. They probably go 280 to 300 all the way across their front. Um, so they're a big, strong, physical team, and they make no bones about it. They're going to try to run the ball right at you. And uh, if you don't stop them, you don't have a chance to beat them. So it's by far going to be the best – I think it's the best football team we will have played this year. And um, I'm just glad we get them at home, and uh, we're looking forward to the opportunity. Probably the game of the week uh, in the playoffs next year. 
next week. Uh, of course, it could be some other close games too. When you get down the final four, anything can kind of happen. Uh, and it's less seems to always be less chance of an upset in the first round than in the ASA than it is in other leagues. But but still, you uh, you get the situations in the semifinal round. I remember one that always comes to my mind is us going down to South Choctaw and uh, taking care of them. So uh, and that's what that's kind of what started this yeah. seven year run we're on. It did. It sure did. That was a great night. And, uh, you know, and uh, really got us into the championship game probably, I think, a year earlier than, than most expected, and uh, we've been on a roll ever since. Yep, seventh year in a row, we won at least 10 games. Uh, come yeah. out of this game 10 and 1. And I noticed a few kids that were uh, not dressed out tonight. Have you got any injuries that are uh, lingering, or are those kids you're just trying to kind of get healthy? Yeah, no, no, no major injuries. Just, just had some practice issues and things like that. Just. Basic stuff that goes along with the team, and uh, those guys understood what was going on. So, uh, you know, we try to teach accountability in our program. We try to teach these young men how to be accountable because we want to we want to produce good citizens, and we want to uh, produce um, people that are accountable and dependable. That's what our program is about. Six out of six on extra points. That, that helped. Me. We worked hard on that, and we did it live this week. Because I mean, I, you you just don't understand how every single point is so important especially this time of year. And, uh, you know, we're either going to hit those or we're going to go for two. And that was our decision. We went out there the first time we hit it, so we just kept going out there, you know. But um, you got to make those. And it starts with the snap and the protection. That's just as important as the, as the hold and the kick. And everybody's got to do their part. So I was really proud of the guys, really proud of Caden tonight for hitting, hitting all those. Good night. Wasn't yeah. it? 42 14 is always a good night. Playoff win. That was the, other than championship games, which of course are neutral side games, that was the, uh, what did we say, the 15th? The 15th. Yeah, 15th playoff win in a row. Wow. <laughs> At home. Well, or on the road, because we, you know, we went to South Choctaw and they won down there. So, I got gotcha. you. So 14 out of 15 of those were at home, but gotcha. uh, that was a road game. So, but 15 in a row. Uh, yeah. Getting ready to get to the championship game, so uh, that's uh, that's phenomenal. Yeah, we've had a lot of good players in this program, and, and you know they're 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 to be commended for getting us where we're at, and uh, just really proud, really proud that we've you know since 2016 we have not played a game on the road, which is unbelievable in, in the playoffs. It is. I mean that's uh, that speaks well of the players, the coaches. Uh, Fans have been there behind you. The coldest rip tonight had a big crowd. Yeah. Um, I'm sure we'll have a big crowd next week because everybody, everybody's bound to know what's on the line. I mean, it's, yeah. uh, it's, it's a rematch. Uh, they've, uh, I'm sure, circled this game, uh, yeah. especially after they lost to Otago because they probably knew they had a good chance of coming here. So they got that circled and then they want to get to Otago. And, circle that game because they lost to them as well. So. Well, and then most of those kids were on that team that lost to us in the state championship game. So, yeah. you know, that's another incentive for them. We're going to need, we need everybody to be here. We need a huge crowd. We're going to need everybody to, uh, it's going to take everything we have to, uh, to to beat a really good football team. Yeah. I think they're ranked, they're ranked second in the state. Tauga's ranked first. Um, Pikes third and we're fourth. Yeah, the only game they lost to was to a Tauga. So, we, you know, we we might very well, very well might be what you consider an underdog in this game, which we haven't been very often. Yeah, Chester and Dave and I don't mind at all if y'all watch us on Saturday morning. Uh, you can come to the game on Friday night. So yeah. we're going to need a big crowd at Torpor down the field as we take on a very, very good Escambia team, which we, uh, of course, played and beat, fortunately, by two points in the championship game last year. So it's going to be a big road match. Big game, uh, trying to get to that uh, elusive championship game again. And we'll all be here in Lafette next Friday night at 7 o'clock because. And remember, it's great to play for the CNEA. Good night. Go Rebels and God bless.